I'm just trying to think of the way to open. You well, know? let's just keep talking. Yeah, what have you been uh, doing for the last five years, Harry? Yeah, yeah. For the last five years, I've been working on my PhD studying Norwegian killer whales and how they feed and vocalize. And so I had the opportunity to go twice now to Norway. We were there in November. This place is unlike any other I've been to. It is so severe and beautiful. It takes your breath away and it could take your life away if you're not careful. We were coming from a few countries in Europe and from the United States and Canada as the chief scientist, which meant that I was in charge of managing this team and in charge of managing the science associated with the project. I actively stepped in to make sure that people were feeling that they mattered and that they were happy and that they were learning something. You kind of go out as a team and you come back as a team. And in the midst of that day, you've done some really great work. I tried to build a model of success in which people were successful. If they did jobs they were proud of and if they worked together. And I think we achieved that. When the herring come into the fjords, the whole area ignites with biological activity. They bring seagulls, they bring killer whales. They work together to feed on herring and they corral them into a ball and trap it against the surface and then tail slap the edge of the ball, incapacitating the fish and then very delicately picking them off one by one to eat. As Tia Simula, one of the lead researchers said, it looks like an underwater ballet. And so much of what they're doing is happening underwater. And in fact, this research was the first time in which we placed these digital tags that were developed in Woods Hole by Mark Johnson and Peter Tyak on wild killer whales. You're out there in a small boat and the water's freezing and it's cold and windy and you need to slap a tag on the back of one of these whales. It's challenging, isn't it? Yeah, it sounds like a right. trial. trial. Sounds like a trial. It sounds like a trial. We have a seven meter long pole to get a tag on an animal that usually surfaces eight or more meters away from the boat. This tag records the movements of the individual animal that we're putting it on. And so we can quite literally dive with them to depth and roll as they roll and get a sense of how they're moving in 3D underwater. We can actually hear when this tagged animal is about to engage in a tail slap. And we hear a kind of rush over the tag as the animal accelerates into position. Then we hear a, a loud tail slap at the end. The tags also recorded the sounds of the animal. So I can play an example of this for you. But I'm also curious about what makes up these different calls. So if we listen to this call, you can kind of hear two parts to it. And if we listen to this other call, it actually has three bits. If you take the second part of the first call that I played and you put it next to the third part of the second call, then it sounds like this. They actually sound remarkably similar. And so my hunch is that these animals could be um, using these smaller units of sound and rearranging those into more complicated patterns in order to generate the stuff of their vocalizations. There's a limited amount of daylight. How do you spend the rest of the days? We had to find something to do with our time. We always had a communal dinner, and sometimes we'd go to the tourist center. That was sort of this common social destination. The grocery store was right next to there. The chocolate there was amazing. They had milk chocolate, which is milk chocolate. And so we would buy dozens of these bars and bring them back to the ship and go through one or two bars of chocolate every day. Jeff McGee, the skipper, he's also a gifted musician and songwriter. And he wrote a gorgeous ballad while we were in the field our first season. And it really captured a lot of the spirit of what we were doing out there. And one night he performed it for us. There must have been some nice nature experiences with the scenery and being so close to the animals. Mm. On one particular morning, we were following a group. A smaller animal stuck its head up out of the water and he focused his eye right on each of us. It just reminded me that this was his world, and he was as aware of us as we were aware of him. This was their home, and we were guests there. We got eight tags done and dusted, and our hard drives all encrusted. Can't take no more gigabytes. Ben Miller and Shapiro, those hawker tagging heroes, will be the scientific saviors of our time. Don't forget Team T.U. Simla Turns the key to the unfamiliar In the place where the sun don't shine ah, nah, 
I don't 